Thank you very much, uh, Juliana, uh, for uh, inviting me and uh, for introducing me. I'm just I just want to check uh, is my uh, screen sharing uh, full screen now? Yes, it's on full yes. screen. Ah, great. So thank you very much. Um, yes, my name is uh, Janka Kappenburg. Uh, I work for New Energy Coalition. Uh, I'm a program manager there. New Energy Coalition is um, a network and knowledge uh, organization uh, which has the aim to, uh, to smarten and stimulate the energy uh, transition. Uh, so I am working as a program manager of the Heaven project, which is all about kickstarting an integrated hydrogen economy in the Northern Netherlands. Uh, so I think it is uh, a nice uh, follow up to the previous presentation, uh, because this actually is a, uh, a, a project in which a hydrogen valley is being implemented. So uh, let's first start uh, with uh, our location. We're located in uh, the Netherlands and then zooming in a bit uh, in the northern Netherlands, uh, to be specific. <laughs> Uh, so we are in the north of the Netherlands and the provinces of Friesland, Groningen and uh, Drenthe, um, which have about 1.7 million inhabitants, uh, which is about 10% of uh, the Dutch population uh, and uh, located on about 25% of uh, the, uh, um, uh, the land uh, of the Netherlands. So... Um, What's important to know is uh, that um, the situation in the Northern Netherlands. Uh, in Groningen, uh, there uh, is a large natural gas, uh, uh, natural gas field, which is called the Slochteren gas field. Um, and that's um, uh, one of the largest onshore natural gas fields uh, in Europe. And since its discovery in 1959, natural gas has become a major source of economic activity in this region. Um, but the extraction of the Groningen gas has led to protests from local residents here. And because of the consequential earthquakes and the resulting damages to buildings and uh, safety issues there, um, uh, we have had protests from, from local residents. And uh, eventually this led to the decision uh, by our national government to close down uh, the Slochteren gas field as of 2023. And um, this, uh, the rundown of the gas production has had major effects, as you can imagine, uh, both on the national financial balance uh, as on uh, the economic situation, um, uh, specifically in the Northern Netherlands, because we had a, um, the business here in the Northern Netherlands uh, used to be natural gas and um, uh, closing down the gas field has um, caused us to, um, to, to the need of a new business. And that's um, the plan is uh, to become a green hydrogen economy in the Northern Netherlands. So stepping into hydrogen uh, fits like a glove, actually, because of the history uh, in the Northern Netherlands and therefore the experience in natural gas extraction. Uh, there's an elaborate existing uh, infrastructure in gas. Uh, there are about 17,000 kilometers of gas pipelines in the Netherlands um, uh, connecting all the approximately 450 larger and smaller gas fields. Uh, and the residential areas. And these um, uh, gas pipelines, they could be repurposed to accommodate transportation of hydrogen, uh, which could contribute to making uh, green hydrogen available to the market. Um, and the market is, uh, consists of industry, mobility, and residential heating. In addition, uh, these uh, pipelines could also be used for net balancing. So the Northern Netherlands have all the relevant conditions in place to develop this green hydrogen economy, um, which is, uh, so to say, the gas, infra gas infrastructure. Um, we also have existing and growing offshore wind power potential. Um, two large chemical industrial areas aiming to become more sustainable. We have one uh, in Delft Sail, uh, the port of Delft Sail in the north, and one uh, at Emmen in the province of Drenthe. Um, 
And then there's, uh, of course, the um, uh, reduction, uh, the local re uh, emission reduction goals, um, the decarbonization of urban mobility. And uh, there's a regional ambition to become an integrated hydrogen economy. So this all um, came together uh, and led to the development of the HEAVEN program, uh, which stands for Hydrogen Energy Applications in Valley Environments for the Northern Netherlands. Um, this is a um, was a the, the proposal, the Heaven Projects uh, proposal was a response to a Horizon 2020 call. And uh, it's coordinated by uh, us, by New Energy Coalition. Uh, we coordinate a consortium of about 30 parties, ranging from small, medium and large businesses to expert advisories, knowledge institutions, and uh, we have broad support, uh, both geographical and uh, political. And here, uh, there's a, uh, a slide in which you can see all the, uh, the partners. Maybe it's nice to mention that Hydrogen Island is also uh, part of our uh, consortium. And you see uh, both small and larger parties, uh, parties such as Shell uh, are involved, but also uh, a smaller uh, transport company such as uh, Uvo Touringcar, um, Bytesnet Data Center. We have a, uh, and also the University of Groningen. So we have a large, uh, we have a large number of uh, of parties involved. Uh, we are being supported by the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking or the, uh, the clean hydrogen alliance as they are now called, uh, but also by the province of Groningen and the province of uh, Drenthe. Just to give you an idea about the uh, size of the project, uh, the total costs are about 100 million euros. We have 20 million euros of funding from the European uh, commission. And then we have 20 million uh, euros of public co-funding uh, from the provinces and from the national uh, government, which is in progress, and uh, 50 to 60 million uh, euros of uh, will come from additional Dutch subsidy schemes, but also private co-funding uh, by consortium partners, uh, which is um, uh, quite a matter to um, a get all in place, as you can imagine. So um, uh, I'm not going to tire you too much with um, um, schemes, but I think this schematic is a, a nice way to just give a, a brief overview of the entire uh, project. Um, the entire heaven uh, project is um, can be divided into four clusters. And uh, the first cluster is uh, located in the Delft Sail uh, area, and uh, it's, um, it's mostly due uh, with the Delft Sail Chemical Park. Um, uh, so I will get into uh, the details uh, later. Then we have the second cluster, which is more thematically oriented. So it's uh, the storage and built environment cluster. Um, and we have uh, more residential heating uh, applications, but also a small um, uh, pilot study, uh, a pilot uh, storage um, in a salt cavern. Then we have the third cluster uh, is again um, geographically um, defined. It's uh, the Emmen industry cluster. Uh, and the fourth cluster is thematically defined, it's the transport uh, cluster, so green mobility, um, which uh, brings me to say it's, uh, uh, it's good to emphasize that this, the entire Heaven project is about green hydrogen. So, um, uh, as was mentioned before, there are different types of, of hydrogen, and this is all coming from uh, renewable uh, electricity, so it's all green hydrogen. And then uh, finally, supporting all these applications are studies and replication work packages. So uh, um, there are studies uh, that are supporting all of these um, uh, applications. And then there are uh, follower territories, uh, which are um, monitoring our activities. And we try to uh, build a replication model which can be used uh, for other locations uh, so that hydrogen valleys can be um, um, 
replicated in other uh, in other areas in um, Europe and of course all over the world. So to give some more um, uh, detail of the first uh, of the first cluster, which is the chemical part of sale. There we uh, facilitate the supply of green uh, hydrogen to green methanol production process. Um, also the uh, facilitation of the sustainable aviation fuel, which will be um, uh, developed there um, uh, at the Sky Energy um, uh, plant. And then we have a pipeline, which is being uh, realized, polymer pipeline. And also very important, uh, the development of a hydrogen hub, which will be used uh, for the distribution of hydrogen across the region uh, via trailers uh, for areas that are not connected to the uh, pipeline grid uh, yet. And then we have an uh, inland salt barge, which is being um, uh, which is being rebuilt into a um, uh, hydrogen uh, salt ship. Um, um, which is uh, transporting um, uh, salt from uh, the Delft Sail region to the Rotterdam um, port. And in the second cluster, we have the storage and built environment activities. Uh, there's residential heating there for 100 new and 250 existing houses in the city of Hogeveen. Uh, there is a municipal building in the city of Groningen, which is um, uh, experimenting with um, admixing hydrogen to their um, uh, to their uh, uh, gas um, uh, gas boiler for um, heating uh, heating the building. And um, uh, we have their backup uh, the backup power for a data center uh, using a 100 kilowatt uh, fuel cell. Um, it's also in the city of Groningen. And then we have the pilot underground hydrogen storage in South Wending. Um, so there were some successful uh, testing uh, there and the commercial operation is planned uh, for 2026. So uh, moving on to the third cluster, uh, the industry cluster in Emmen. Uh, Shell will build an electrolyzer, which um, uh, is a four megawatt electrolyzer, so it's a, a rather small electrolyzer. Um, and this, um, uh, the hydrogen produced there will be used for a hydrogen refueling station in Emmen, um, uh, which will be uh, opening uh, in, the, in the second quarter of this year. Um, then, um, Hydrogen will also be um, transported to the uh, Gatec Industry Park in Emmen, and there it will be used for uh, steam generation, which is done now by a natural gas uh, turbine. And uh, also there, uh, they can add mix uh, hydrogen to this uh, gas turbine and uh, supply uh, the customers on the Gatec Industry Park with. Um, uh, with uh, green or more sustainable uh, steam. And then the fourth cluster, the green mobility cluster, we have a, a lot of um, uh, transport applications here. We have 100 uh, fuel cell passenger cars, we have taxis, uh, we have light duty vans, uh, garbage trucks, uh, heavy duty trucks, uh, we have long distance buses, uh, and we have a number of um, uh, refueling stations. So here, uh, the 14 trucks, 100 passenger cars, and, uh, and uh, five taxis. Um, then the public transport, uh, we have two uh, hydrogen Q liners. So these are uh, long, distance, uh, long distance public uh, buses. Um, with a very uh, large range, which uh, cannot be uh, cannot be made by uh, the battery, uh, the battery electric uh, buses, and um, uh, a hydrogen uh, eight person van, which is also used for public transport. Um, and then for the uh, 
for the fueling for the refueling stations um, some recommendations already uh, because we are two years in the program in the uh, in process um, sorry in progress uh, of the um, in in the project and uh, what we um, uh, what we see is that it's very hard to develop um, uh, hydrogen refueling stations because all of these um, um, uh, all of these conditions need to be uh, need to be met and everything needs to come together um, and um, uh, we also find that policies are often lacking and it's very uh, difficult for um, civil servants for policymakers for people who give up the permits to um, deal with uh, these kind of applications for permits so it's uh, it's taking a lot of time to uh, to get things done but um, uh, that's uh, I think that's the uh, downside of pioneering but also the upside uh, the downside is of course that it takes a lot of time but the upside is that you're doing actually something that other people will um, who follow you will uh, benefit from because you have uh, well you've laid out a path for them um uh then almost coming to the conclusion of my um presentation uh, we have uh, also the studies and replication activities in our project um uh, we are trying to apply a guarantees of origin uh, approach to hydrogen uh, developing business models for hydrogen impact analysis uh, and uh, all these studies supporting the clusters uh, will culminate into a roadmap to 2050, uh, which of course we can then uh, later use for, uh, well, rolling out this roadmap and developing uh, additional projects uh, to, uh, uh, to um, give a follow-up. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, we are uh, preparation, uh, we do preparation replication in other European re uh, regions by collecting best practices and uh, lessons uh, learned. And here's also uh, good to mention the Big Hip project and also the Green Highland uh, project, which was already mentioned uh, by Rory um, previously. Uh, so we are trying to connect with these other projects, uh, Green Highland, uh, the island of Mallorca, but also Big Hit in uh, Big Hit in the Orkneys, in Scotland, uh, to um, uh, well try to share knowledge and share lessons, uh, share lessons learned, good practices, uh, to facilitate uh, replication. Because in the end, um, uh, the uh, the objective would be to have. Um, a great number of hydrogen valleys uh, across across Europe, across the world, and eventually also connecting uh, connecting these hydrogen valleys to have a good uh, integrated hydrogen uh, economy in place. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention, and it was a pleasure to be here. <laughs>